All right, hey guys, welcome to Gizmo Doctor. My name is Philippe. And I'm Ty. And today we're gonna to be doing an iPad 2 uh, repair walkthrough video. Um, we've had some new techs recently and we, uh, to help train them up, we decided to uh, do a little recording and give you a step-by-step -step guide. So uh, this is it and um, yeah, let's just get straight to it. So the tools we'll need today are the nylon spudger, curved tweezers, and flat tweezers. We'll also need bicycle playing cards. We'll need a Phillips number 00 screwdriver, a metal pry tool like the Isesimo, a razor blade, scissors and a sharp tool like a box cutter, 8, 6, and 2 millimeter double-sided tape, All right, guys, here we go. We are going to begin the repair shortly. Uh, first thing we need is our heat gun. Now, we're going to be heating all of the front glass surface evenly, but you're gonna need to focus on the areas where you're beginning work. In this case, that corner I just pointed to. That's where we're gonna start since it's already broken and it gives us a good access point. Right now we're just testing the functionality of the screen, making sure everything works before we begin the actual repair proper. Now we're gonna power it down and uh, begin the heating process. So turn our heat gun on and away we go. Just like I said, heating all around the iPad. Gonna get it nice and warm and focus specifically on the area where we will begin work. Um, Again, I believe it is that corner at the top of the screen. So, you know, just touch it. It should be, my gauge, my personal gauge is to touch it. If you can touch it for about a half a second without it actually causing you pain, then you're good. Um, so first we're gonna peel away these uh, first cracks that were there. They come away quite easily. And as you can see here, it looks like this has been repaired before. There is some non-OEM uh, non adhesive under there, so that should make this job a little bit easier in getting the digitizer off, being that aftermarket glues are not nearly as strong as the OEM adhesives. So, as you can see, I'm having a fairly easy time uh, getting my pry tool up, uh, up between the glass and the bezel always want to stay between the glass and the bezel um, so as not to waste money on reusing bezels um, so we're just continuing around the corner and this is the corner with the camera so you do need to take special care there and also the um, power volume flex is there so do take care in that area we'll have an annotation to our uh, danger area video later and I'll just stick this card in there just to keep it from uh, re-adhering. And now we're moving towards the front-facing camera. Again, need to take caution here. This is another uh, red zone area. Take extreme caution. You do not want to break that camera. Now this is um, an LTE version, so there are some black um, antennas in there that you do need to be careful of. They're pretty tough though, so it's pretty hard to, to damage them. Um, now I'm just going to add a little more heat going down this side and this is the side with the digitizer cable itself on it So we're good most of the way down until the last maybe two and a half three inches That's when we need to start taking caution and maybe even stop altogether Like I said though this being aftermarket adhesive It shouldn't pose that much of a threat as far as uh, getting the digitizer off once we get at least half or most of the way down this side. So we're just gonna wedge our way down here slowly. Remember, keep a, a firm, very powerful, but controlled pressure on the blade. I don't know if that makes sense. Like very, you're pushing very hard, but in a very controlled manner. Um, because you do have a very fragile LCD millimeters away from the tip of your blade, so. Now, as we're nearing the digitizer flex cable, I'm kind of slowing down, kind of pointing out where it is underneath the glass. And it appears we've made our way around that. So now we're going to need to get under the bottom. Um, that's going to contain the home button. 
and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth flex cable antenna, which is the most common mistake to make in repairs. So now we're going to the home button again. This aftermarket LCD is just given no resistance, so it's it's this is a much easier job than it would be if this were this iPad's first time being repaired. So now I'm just going to take a card and watch how I twist it upwards as I'm pushing towards the bottom left of the screen. I'm twisting it upwards so as to get between the glass and the little film that is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna. So just going to make a little sawing motion to get that separated. Um, that really isn't even necessary though, given that uh, they made a mistake, which we will reveal here in just a second. Um, it appears, there we go, we got it separated. And then once we pull it up, you will notice that the previous technician left on the blue um, adhesive sticker. So there was no adhesive on the antenna connecting it to the glass. Um, I've never seen that happen before, honestly. That's just uh, shoddy worksmanship, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, back to the repair at large. Um, so now that that's done, I'm just going to uh, clear our workspace a little bit and then set to unscrewing the LCD screws. We need to get those out. It's a kind of monotonous process. Alright, so now we are beginning the LCD removal. Um, again, very carefully use a card or some sort of soft material to get under there um, as you don't want to damage it. So now remember it is connected on its left side so it opens like a book, thusly. Um, then once it is open, you have here your LCD cable and then your LCD connector to the actual LCD, along with your digitizer connectors and your digitizer cable. All right, so this is the main power distributor to the entire system. And um, I've never seen this happen. I've only heard of this a few times, but if you do not have this disconnected and you disconnect a component of the iPod, like the LCD or digitizer, then you could brick the entire iPod. So, iPad, sorry. So I always stick a card or just some sort of non-conductive material. I wedge it in between one of the leads on one side of that screw. Um, again, I've never seen this happen. This could be an urban legend, but better safe than sorry in my book. So I do it just to be safe. Um, so yeah, we got the uh, four of spades in there. Now moving on. We are going to have to remove the LCD cable. So you pump this up with your plastic spudger and then pull it away with that same tab that you just popped up. Disconnecting the cable, now you can lift away the LCD and that is that. Just set that aside somewhere safe and out of harm's way. Now we get to remove the digitizer. Now we're going to go back in towards the bottom here, and there are two connectors right here. The first one is easy. You can just uh, kind of pop your flat end in and pop it. That other one has that weird bezel on top of it, so it makes it a little more difficult, that one on the right. So anyway, we're going to pop this one up with our bezel. Simply just put it underneath and then pop it up just like a little, you know, your plain old lever action pop up. 
again, it can make it a little bit easier if you remove the bezel, but let's let's not remove it. Let's let's do it the hard way. So let's pop this one up. And boom. And now for the second one, if you just go into the corner with the tip, just the tip, it makes it a little easier. There we go. And popping that one up is successful as well. Now you are free to pull the digitizer cable free and lift the digitizer away from the frame. Now, pretty much just go around and clean off the uh, old adhesive with alcohol. You want uh, at least 91% isopropyl alcohol and some microfiber wipes. Just gonna go around, just scrub the alcohol, scrub the alcohol, maybe get a metal tool. I like this little curved razor blade myself and just kind of scrape it all off. Um, a nice screwdriver with a head that's as wide as the edge of the uh, frame, that also works nicely and just a cloth to, to wipe the stuff onto. Um, it's, it's a tedious job, but uh, really it's probably the most time intensive aspect of the entire repair. Um, so yeah, just take our time and get that done. Alright, now we begin tape application. Um, there's a bunch of different types of tape. I believe this is 6mm tape. Um, I have some 8 around there somewhere. Um, and that's what we're going to use for the majority of it, the wide parts. Um, and yeah, you know, you just tape around all the exposed areas, uh, but nothing that looks too critical. Um, you want to make good contact, because keep in mind, this is what's keeping the glass stuck to the frame. So just keep that in mind the entire time you're doing this. Now, once you have the uh, tape applied, you are uh, going to want to remove... There's also actually tape on the digitizer, and you're going to want to remove part of the uh, tape cover on the digitizer. It's going to make your job a million times easier later on. All right, so now we are f just finishing the last of the digitizer connections. We're going to make that make sure that cable is firmly seated. And just make sure that everything is sitting nicely in place. You want everything to be nice and neat because if there's any any bumps or anything's out of place, it's going to it's going to cause distortions in the LCD once the LCD has been screwed in. Um, so now that that is looking good, we're gonna prop this up on our heat gun and get the digitizer. I'm sorry, the LCD. And put this bad boy back into place. Uh, pretty simple once you get it connected. Um, getting the connector in place. For some reason I had a little more trouble than usual on this one, but uh, nothing a little patience can't fix. So, again, it's got that little bar that can assist you uh, when pulling it into the uh, pressure plates. So here is the connector. I know you can't really see too well, but what I'm doing is using that little bar to pull it into position into the uh, little pressure plates that it needs to rest against. So I'm going to, you can push on the LCD flex cable itself and pull on that bar. And once you get it in, just snap that bar down into place and you are good to go. That right there is almost mission accomplished. There we go. Did you see it kind of twitch in there? That was it. So now we can, without forgetting to remove the card, lay down the LCD. And once the uh, 
power screw is back in, you'll be completely ready to lay the LCD back down and screw in the uh, anchor screws for the LCD. All right, so now we see that the iPad is alive, so we're going to go ahead and close the digitizer. Um, we need to make sure the touch on the digi works uh, before sealing it completely. This digitizer we're using does not have a protective film on the back. Most of them do, however, so you will need to remember to remove that protective film on the back. Otherwise, you are going to have a lot of uh, retracing your footsteps to do. Get that down. The reason I'm pulling it away is because I'm trying to apply even pressure all around it just to make sure that the adhesive seats um, properly. This one had some extensive frame damage all around, so it didn't sit quite sit right. You see right there is some frame damage. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure it's pushed in firmly to all the corners. All right, job is complete. Digitizer is on there, and the adhesive is firmly holding. Mission accomplished. All right, guys, well, that is it for uh, this installment. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Um, if you like the video, please click the like button. If you didn't like the video, I don't know why you're still watching, but uh, keep point. it up. <laughs> um, stay tuned for our next uh, our next video. Um, we're not quite sure. Might have something to do with one of those iMacs back there. Um, could have to do with any sort of electronics. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>